Default shares. In Windows 2003, there are some common shares that have already been created for you. Now, most of these shares are hidden by default. Now, to see these shares, we'll click on Start, Administrative Tools, and then we'll launch the Computer Management MMC. And now, I'll just expand this, and over here on the left, we'll expand our shared folders, and then we'll choose Shares. Now, in our right-hand pane, we can see all the shares on our server. Now you'll notice here we have a few shares that end with a dollar sign. Now these shares are hidden shares. Now if we compare that list with a list in our typical browse list we'd see on our server, here we only see two, NetLogon and SysVol. In comparison, we see three other shares. Of course, they're the hidden ones that you can only see through the computer management interface. Now the first share we'll look at is our C$ dollar share. Now by default, all drives are given a hidden share at the root of the drive. And this share is known as an administrative share and it cannot be removed. Well, you can, however, right click on the share and we can choose to stop it from being shared. Or we can go and stop the server service, which is responsible for managing file sharing. But as soon as you reboot the server, it will be back. So if this is a problem for you and you want to remove this administrative share, you should write a startup script that stops sharing and then when you reboot, the share will be removed at least until the next reboot. Now the next one we have here is admin dollar. And this is like C dollar in that it is an administrative share. But rather than mapping to the root of a drive, it maps directly to the location that Windows is installed in. So if your copy of Server 2003 is installed in your C Windows directory, then that's what admin dollar will map to. But is this a big deal though? Well, it could be, especially if your other administrators have a habit of installing Windows in non-default directories, or you still run a bunch of Windows NT servers, which by default install to the WinNT directory, then mapping to the admin dollar share will always take you to the right place. So here, we could simply go back to our server, and then add an admin dollar, and then hit enter, and that takes us to our Windows directory. Okay, so we'll go back. The next one we have here is the IPC dollar. Now this is a widely used share for managing named pipes. Now named pipes are actually bits of memory that are used to handle communication between processes. Now when you connect to another server to perform some sort of administrative task, you actually map a drive, the IP dollar share manages this communication. Now here you'll notice that it doesn't actually reference a folder path like the others we looked at. With the IPC dollar share, you can't actually connect to it like you would a regular folder. Now the next one we have here is the net logon share. Now this of course isn't a hidden share, but its importance is definitely worthy of mention. Windows Server 2003 domain controllers and servers use the file replication service to replicate system policies and logon scripts to every domain controller in a domain. Now when you make a change to a logon script which is stored in the sysvol share of a domain controller, the file replication service replicates this change to the sysvol shares of all other domain controllers in your domain. Now if the administrator manages scripts for a domain using Active Directory users and computers, then logon scripts are typically located in the Windows sysvol slash sysvol again, followed by the domain name and then in the scripts folder. Now the system will look for scripts in the net logon share of the domain controller that authenticates the user. Now even though they aren't listed here, there's still a couple of other shares I should probably mention. One of those would be print dollar. And this holds the drivers that are required for printing whenever you share a printer. And then there's the REPL dollar, which is R-E-P-L dollar. And that's a share which is used whenever replication takes place. Now the replication service makes a REPL dollar share on the export server, and then the export server sends a replication pulse to the import server. And these import servers connect back to the REPL share on the export server in order to receive the replicated data. Okay, now that we've discussed the default shares, I want to wrap up with a brief discussion on how to connect to these shares. And I'll say brief because this subject is incredibly easy. There's a few ways that we can connect to a share, and the two most common are using the GUI and the net use command from the command prompt. So to start with, let's go the old-fashioned way and we'll use the command prompt. 
So we'll click on start and we'll open up a command prompt. And the first thing we're going to do is type in net use and hit enter. And this will tell us what shares we're currently connected to. And you can see here, there are no entries in the list, so that means we're not connected to any shares. Okay, so now we're going to use our net use command to map a drive to a remote share. Now we firstly need to provide a drive letter that we wish to have this map drive use on our system. So pick a drive letter that's not in use and we'll just use the T drive for this example. However, as a side note, if you're unsure of what drive letters you do have available, just replace the T colon with an asterisk and the next available drive letter will be chosen for you. Okay, now we need to provide a path to our share. Now the first part we need is the server name. Now in our case, we'll just map straight to our existing server here. So we'll just type in server01 and then we need to provide the shared name. Now our shared folder is called data. So the full command is going to be net use with the T colon, followed by our server name, followed by our share name. And we'll hit enter, and we can see the command completed successfully. So now if we go and open up my computer, we see here that we have an entry for our data on server 01, and it's currently got the drive letter of T. Okay, let's go back to our command prompt. Now if you are connecting using an account that doesn't have the correct permissions to access the share, the command prompt will prompt you to enter in a username and password of an account that is authorized to connect. But if you do want to provide a different username and password, you could try this option. We'll still use our net use T along with our server name and our data directory. But after that, we type in the word password followed by slash user with a colon and then the name of a user we wish to connect as. Now because we're in a domain context, we're going to have to use our domain first. So we'd type in testdomain.com and then we'd enter in the account that we wish to connect as. Now alternatively, rather than using all of this here, we could also use a user principal name. So again, we'd type in user, but then we could type in administrator at testdomain.com. And that'll do exactly the same thing. Okay, now if you don't want your password displayed on the screen as you would see here, for all passers by to see, you can simply omit the password and then you'll be prompted to type it in. Now if for some reason, and trust me this does happen, is a bit of troubleshooting exercise for you, you get an error telling you that a set of credentials conflicts with an existing set of credentials. This means that you've probably tried to access this share before in the past and you've failed. And the server has kept some information about you and it's now preventing you from reconnecting. In that situation, you can and you should use the slash D switch. So we'd simply enter in our net use T followed by our server name and our share name and then use slash D. And this will tell the server to forget anything they ever heard about you and start over fresh. Now a couple of additional points to mention. You can substitute the server name for an IP address if you wish. And finally there's this persistent switch. Now if you add a persistent with a colon and then no at the end of your command, then this share will not try to reconnect when you restart your computer. Now this is useful if you only need temporary access because it speeds up rebooting your computer when it doesn't need to search for a whole bunch of shares to connect to. Okay, that's the command line. It's very simple and it's very quick. And now let's go and talk about the GUI way of doing things. Now the simplest way of connecting to a share is to click start, right click on my computer, and then select Map Network Drive. And now we just simply choose an available drive letter from any of the ones that we haven't currently used. And then in our, our folder box, we just simply type in the path to the share. So again, it will be server01 slash data. Now down here, we can see the reconnect at logon box. Now this just makes this drive mapping persistent as we did over here with the command line. So simply it means when we reboot, we'll reconnect again. Now if you do need to provide a different username and password to connect to this share, simply click on this hyperlink and then you can provide 
any additional credentials. So if you're an administrator and you happen to be running down the hall and Bob calls you over and he wants to have access to this share, but he doesn't have permissions to map it, well, you can simply do it for him. Okay, now that's a way of creating a map drive. But what happens if you just want to access a share and you don't care for it being mapped? Well, as simple as it gets, we could simply come up here to our address bar and we'll just type in a double backslash, followed by the name of the server and, of course, our share, and we'll hit enter. And we're straight in. Now, alternatively, you could also do that from start, run, and then type in the path and hit enter again. Now, finally, to disconnect an already existing share, we can simply right-click on the share and then choose disconnect. And there we are, it's gone. So there you see Windows shares in action. They're incredibly easy to implement, incredibly easy to connect. In this video, we took a look at some of the default shares. We discussed automatic replication and the importance of the admin dollar share and any of the default administrative shares. We also discussed how to connect to shares from the GUI or the command line and how to make these shares persistent so that when we reboot our computer, our shares remain.